Our first guest tonight is an Academy Award and Emmy-winning actress who you know from films like If Beale Street Could Talk and shows such as The Leftovers and Watchmen. Her film One Night in Miami is available on Amazon Prime Video now. Let's take a look. Can't nobody else understand what it's like being one of us, except us. One of us. You know. Young, black, righteous, famous, unapologetic. target on your back it was gonna be there anyway this ain't about civil rights those activists ain't too squat about them four little girls that got bombed in alabama that's why they're preaching to a deaf congregation because they ain't giving black people what they really want what was that what you have but take for granted power Please welcome back to the show, Regina King. How are you, Regina? I am doing all right, Seth. How are you? Good. I would love to say it's nice to have you here, but of course, here is in quotes, and this is now the second time you have joined us remotely uh, since this all started, and so I just wanted to say thank you and, and how much we appreciate that. Well, thanks for having me. I can't believe that like our anniversary is on Zoom again. It is a uh, very strange. Uh, something that was not strange for me because, look, you are a very accomplished uh, dramatic actor and, of course, a director now as well. I am of an age where I know you as a comedian first, and it was so thrilling to watch you on SNL. Did you enjoy that experience? I did. I did. I mean, just all praises to the writers and the actors and just the entire production team. I was just blown away. I, I feel like I can never, ever, 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 ever in my life say anything about something that may not be funny to me on SNL. Because what they do <laughs> to bring that show to us every week is nothing short of a miracle. Yes. I had the same experience when I started working there because I think like everybody, the show, we feel like it belongs to us and you're critical of it, you love it, and then there are other times you don't. And then you show up and you try to do that job and you think, oh, okay, okay, I'll shut up now. I shut all the way up. <laughs> uh, you were nominated for a Golden Globe, and uh, you looked uh, wonderful uh, in your beautiful dress, but uh, your dog, Cornbread, kind of stole the day. Are you jealous of how much attention Cornbread got? I am not. Listen, Cornbread is 15 years old. He deserves all the attention to just be hanging in there and, and, and representing for the senior dogs. <laughs> Well, you did a great job, and uh, you did a fantastic job with the film. Uh, this is based on a stage play. Were you familiar at all with the play before uh, it first came across your desk? I was not. I was not. Reading the screenplay was my introduction to it. I guess I must have been off working somewhere because I usually, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm up to, to, to date when it comes to the theater scene in L.A. because it's so small. Um, but um, I read the screenplay, which was written by Kemp Powers, who also, he adapted um, his play to the screenplay, and I was just blown away. So, you know, this is a, a, an evening that happened, but it's obviously a fictionalized account of it, and it's about four very famous uh, black men in the 60s, and, and even though it takes place in the 60s, it does obviously tie into what we're going through right now. Do you feel as though you were both making a movie about the past, but also that it was very urgent in regards to what's happening in the present? Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it actually, the, that was one of the things that appealed to me when I read this script, that it was relevant. I mean, unfortunately, um, these, these conversations are conversations that Black people have been having before that night, 1964. Um, and so the, the, the dialogue, the, the, the story was always relevant, but it was just what happened last year. We were in the middle of a pandemic when um, George Floyd's murder was captured on uh, a video and uh, the world was watching. So it made something that's always been relevant for black people uh, urgent for the film to uh, come out. I imagine one of the trickiest things about a film like this and, and directing it is getting the casting right because you're dealing with four, you know, historical figures that everybody has seen so much film on and other actors have played so famously. Uh, you nailed it, 
But was that something that, when you first took it on, you knew would be a challenge? I did, I did, but I knew that uh, it was an opportunity. I, I, look, I, I'm, I'm an actor. I, I love to act. I love being part of the thespian community. So I knew that it was going to be for actors that understood the responsibility that they were taking on. And that was the biggest joy for me, just watching Kingsley, Leslie, Aldis, and Eli just shine. I felt like I was the fifth wheel. I've never been so excited to be a fifth wheel. <laughs> Did you, and it really is great. And you know, obviously we've seen a lot of these, you know, figures in, in biopics before. And I will say as a viewer, it's really nice to just watch them in sort of one snapshot of time. And I think that makes it also more, you know, unique than, than anything we've seen before as well. As someone who's been in show business for as long as you have, I'm wondering if directing was something, you know, when you were a kid and obviously, you know, you started in, in sitcoms, did you think, oh, I would love to be behind the camera one day, or was that something that sort of took a longer time to come to that conclusion? It, it took a longer time to come to that conclusion. I think I was picking up things along the way. You know, sometimes you don't realize you're the sponge until later on in life. Uh, but but I'm glad that I was absorbing all of this information, and 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 I've been with, I've had just the the blessing to. Uh, uh, work alongside some real powerhouses. And um, I, I feel like I was being groomed, if you will, if you could say that, and, and, it, and it's in a positive light. Let's take uh, it back. Let's take back that word and use it as a positive. Yes, yes. Um, and and I, I would say somewhere around uh, 30, 35 is when I just really started taking in all of the different um uh, 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 jobs, if you will, that m bring a story to us. You know, so often we only hear about the director and we only hear about the actors, but I started seeing how the director gets the opportunity to work with everyone, the production designer, the wardrobe designer, the DP, and just, um, I would say around that time is when I really started paying attention and feeling like it was something that, you know, a person that's enthusiastic about control might be a good space to be in. <laughs> you, uh, you're doing something else that I, as soon as I heard you were doing it, I thought, oh, that's a very good use of one's time during trying times, which is you're watching a lot of old Golden Girl episodes. Yes. <laughs> Gives me just joy. It just makes you feel like, you know, everything may be all right in the world one day. You know, I always, when I watch an old Golden Girls episode, my takeaway is this script must have been eight pages because the laughs between the punchlines are so long. <laughs> that I'm just, like they, they, I'm like, how, this must be the shortest script ever. It's just like set up, punchline, laugh for a full minute, and then they but move they're on. they genuine laughs. They, they are genuine laughs. That's not like, you know, a, a laugh track. That's people cracking up. Yeah. It really is. Uh, I mean, uh, again, your cast of four does a great job in One Night in Miami, but that's another cast of four that I would put them up against. The Golden Girls versus One Night in Miami. <laughs> hey, this is, that's, a, that's, a, that's a pretty solid cast to go up against. <laughs> in the brackets, in the uh, March Madness of best four-person cast. Hey, thank you so much. It's always so lovely to see you. I really appreciate your time. Always so good to see you, too. Give your wife a hug for me. I will, of course. She'll be thrilled to get it. One Night Miami is available on Amazon Prime Video now. We'll